Today on Pro Church Daily, we're talking about why live streaming for churches is overrated. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Daily, the show where in 10 minutes or less, you'll get a daily dose of tips and tactics to help your church share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift that we've seen in the last 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills. I'm joined as always by the boss man, it's Brady Shearer, and today we're talking about why live streaming for churches is overrated. I'll preface this, Alex, by saying, Hey, I know that this is an unpopular opinion, yeah. and the purpose of this episode is simply to lay out the case for why your church does not need to live stream. Because right. I do think that there's this inherent pressure around live stream because it seems like every church is doing it yeah. nowadays, and it can feel like, well, our church needs to do this because it's the thing that you do. And I never like to make decisions simply because everyone else is doing it. I like to make decisions based on empirical evidence, on an expectation of ROI, and on an understanding of my own church. So what we're gonna do yeah. is we're gonna present a contrary opinion, be the devil's advocate per se, although I do believe this, so I'm right. playing, I am the devil in this case. Right. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off by talking about the size of the average church. Nine out of 10 churches in America have weekly attendance of fewer than 350 people, and wow. the median size of an American congregation is 75 people. So here's the claim that I want to start this off. Okay. Here's what I believe. Knowing that the weekly attendance numbers of the vast majority of churches in the world, I would say that live streaming is not the best option for most churches. Yeah. When it comes to what you're trying to accomplish with live streaming, I think that there are much more viable alternatives that we're going to talk about in just a moment. Let's first talk about the price of live streaming. Now, I'm not a live production expert, and I often lean on the understanding of others. I do a lot of work in digital, but live production is not my arena. So I asked around, and I asked a number of different churches and leaders and directors that have been in charge of live streaming, and asked, okay, what's like the minimum a church can expect to spend on a single camera setup that's of reasonable quality? Right. And we should just claim that by saying we're not talking to right now about like live streaming on your phone. Okay. We're talking about a media, yeah, yeah. reasonable level of production with an encoder right. and a tripod and a camera. So this is the complete infrastructure to get up and running live on the internet. And we're still only talking single camera. We're right. not talking multiple yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. And so basically I heard a bunch of different numbers, but they were right around the minimum you can expect to spend is about $5,000 okay. for a full rig. And that means a camera, a switcher, an encoder, cabling, tripod, lamp control, on the tripod, which allows you to zoom in, zoom out, move the camera. Right. Of course, there are other ways to do it. You can hook up a webcam directly yeah. if you're on your computer. Nowadays, you can hold up your phone and do Facebook Live. But we're talking about a certain level of production quality because you can do it cheaper, but at what cost? So to use a comparison, let's say you as a church knew you needed a website and you thought, well, we can't really afford to do a good website, but we know it's important for the SEO purposes. Mm -hmm. Let's throw up a 1995 website that is HTML1 mm -hmm. and is not responsive Sounds because nice. at least we'll have it up there. Right. And that will save you money, but at what cost does that come at? Yeah. Someone lands on that and now you're making a really poor first impression right. perhaps. And so that's the important thing to consider when it comes to price. It's not cheap to get started in live streaming, especially because I do believe that there are affordable options, alternatively, that can help you accomplish the same thing. Let's yeah. talk about the ROI now. The most important thing that you can do with live streaming, if you are doing it or if you're considering doing maybe doing a test run, you could do a test run with Facebook to see how people yeah. respond with just your phone before diving into the thousands of dollars of investment and, and volunteers every week that have to run it. But basically, what are the numbers for your church? And, and how many people would need to watch this weekly for it to be worth spending all of that money? And then mm -hmm. compare the cost to the alternative. So one alternative you could go with is audio only. So if you did an audio only podcast or an audio, yeah, an audio only podcast of your, of your message, mm -hmm. and this would be the difference between live streaming and a recorded podcast, and that's part of the comparison, okay? There's the pro of having it live versus the con of having it recorded and not live, but if just as many people are listening to each, and one costs like 100 bucks to get started, yeah. and one costs 5,000, and we're a church of 350 or less, because most are, right. is that a trade-off we're willing to make? Could that money be spent elsewhere? Because when you consider ROI and any decision with digital, really any decision with budget in your church, you're not making these decisions in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. If you spend $1 or $5,000 towards live streaming, that's $5,000 less dollars to spend on what I would consider much more important yeah, exactly. digital endeavors, your website, social media, paid promotions, yeah. 
other things that are now do not have money because of your live stream. And so when it comes to ROI, figure out how many people are gonna watch and figure out is this money best spent elsewhere? Because if we're spending it here, we can't spend it on places that, I, like I said, I think are much more important, your website, social media, paid promotion, marketing, and outreach. Final thing to consider, okay. and then I wanna pass it over to you because you're a pastor of a church of about yeah. 100, mm -hmm. and I wanna hear your thoughts on this. Okay. What's your motivation for doing a live stream? Yeah. Much like church mobile apps, much like billboards, there's a certain cool factor yeah, of live is. streaming. You know what's not cool? Facebook ads. They're kind of boring. <laughs> Would I rather drive past a billboard of like my church in my community yeah. or run some Facebook ads? Well, a billboard is much cooler. Yeah. Would you rather live stream and have your message and sermon and service declared and broadcasted to the world yeah. or record an audio podcast? You get a cool countdown on your website. We're going live in three, two, one. That like countdown in the top right that says next time we're going live in three days. Yeah. 20, it's always counting down. Like, yeah. There's a certain cool factor, but I think when we're being stewards of the budget, the time and the resources in our churches, recognizing how limited they are, I don't think that we should be making decisions based on what other churches are doing or based on cool factor. Right. We've got to consider, does this move the needle forward enough based on the money we're spending for our church's unique mission statement? And if yeah. we're all about helping people to love God, love others, make disciples, basically the core mission statement of every single church that follows Jesus, does this affect the bottom line and move the needle forward on that specific mission enough to warrant the spend and cost that we're going to put into this. Your thoughts, Alex? Well, I think the motivation um, to live stream is kind of a symptom of what we've commoditized Christianity in the Western world to be. We focus so much of our time and energy and resources on this Sunday service. So if we think, okay, people aren't, you know, there's a certain amount of people who aren't going to be at our at our church service this Sunday. They're going to be at home or they're they're traveling or wherever. Um, th this is the biggest thing that we do. This is where we put all our resources. This is what we think the most important part of church is. We have to get this to them. And I feel like that's where the motivation for live streaming comes from. But if we expand kind of our 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 perspective on on what we're trying to do as a church and this is where season 167 comes into it mm. it's like yeah what we do during that one hour on sunday is important but is it worth you know spending all that all those resources to get that one hour experience to the handful of people who aren't going to be at church or do we take those resources and push it into the rest of the 167 hours in any other way, whether it's you know investing that money in anything else, yeah. but but really expanding our horizons and and considering that that what we're doing at church has to has to reach further than that one hour on a Sunday morning. And if we start to think about church with that philosophy, well, I think we'll we'll put less of an importance on live streaming that service because mm. we'll realize oh. This isn't all there is to it. There's another. There's a whole life that our people are living during the week, and that's when they need us. They 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 don't need us on on Sunday morning at ten thirty if they're not at church. They're going to be okay for that hour, but maybe on Wednesday evening they're not going to be okay. So let's invest time and money and resources into those other hundred and sixty seven hours and reach them there. I couldn't agree more. What's the best way to accomplish our mission statement? Rebroadcast a live event yeah. or use these platforms natively to reach people? So for instance, let's talk about some alternatives. If we're talking about rebroadcasting a live event versus using these platforms natively, I think your church should live stream. You should have your pastor go live yeah on his or her phone for 10 minutes. Call that your on online service on Sunday. There you go. Have them do a little bit of a devotion, recap the message, do live prayer requests, interact with the people on the live stream right yeah. there. Because I do think that it's definitely something to consider when you're talking about military, you're talking about people that are bedridden or yeah. stuck and, and, and can't come to church or are traveling and you want to make them feel connected to your church. If you're just watching a live stream, you're a fly on the wall. Even if you do have an online pastor, which definitely helps the online yeah. experience, if you're doing a live stream when you are watching your pastor look directly into their mobile device and they're interacting with you on the fly using a Facebook Live for free on your phone, for free on right. Facebook, that's an amazing alternative. We talked about audio only as a great alternative. If you do really wanna do a live stream, I'd recommend creating a private feed that is distributed to those traveling, to those who are at home, mm -hmm. bedridden, can't leave the house, to those who are military, and just have someone hold up their phone or put it on a little like $8 tripod from yeah. Amazon and have that be the live stream. Don't post it publicly because you know the production value is 
uh, production value for someone that's not connected to your church probably won't be worth it. But for those that know your church, they don't care as much about production value. If they really care about just watching the service, yeah, a phone will be fine. We're so used to video on a phone at this point. Well, yeah, like Insta Stories and Snapchat have conditioned us. They've really lowered our standard for the viewing experience as far as quality goes on a phone. You know, I, I can remember just years, like, uh, uh, maybe a year ago even if you're watching a, a video on YouTube that was vertical video yes. all the comments are just like vertical video turn your phone me? sideways yeah. and now we've just been conditioned most of the video we consume uh, you know on the daily whether it's on Instagram or, or uh, Snapchat whatever it's vertical and so people are actually their standards are being lowered which can actually work in, in your advantage as a church you know live streaming on Facebook for free from your phone people are conditioned to watching videos that way they're probably going to be watching it on their phone anyway so that's okay to summarize if you are a church of 350 people or less, as the vast majority, nine out of 10 are, yeah. this is specifically for you. If you're a church of multiple thousands, live streaming is a lot more affordable. Mm -hmm. But if you're a smaller church, don't feel the pressure to be forced to live stream when there are so many great viable alternatives that are essentially free. If you are thinking about live streaming, if you really wanna do it, I would recommend to be a good steward, go through these viable alternatives first. Do the pastor right on Facebook Live for 10 minutes for free on their phone, for free from Facebook. Do the audio only podcast. Do the public, or sorry, the private feed to those that can't visit the church, but don't publish it publicly. Mm -hmm. If after all that, you're seeing huge traction and you're ready to make the investment, go for it. But don't feel the pressure to do it just because other churches are doing it. Right. That's how you waste money and that's how you make a bad decision. Yeah. With all that being said, in tomorrow's episode of Pro Church Daily, episode number 115, we are gonna be talking about gear for live stream because we recognize that some churches, no matter what we say, are gonna do it yeah. and we wanna make sure that you're making good gear decisions when you do. So that'll do it for today's episode of Pro Church Daily. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode of Pro Church Daily. We do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and it'll mean the world to us. Hit the like button, it'll mean the double world to us. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode of Pro Church Daily. We really do appreciate it. Subscribe to this channel, we'll appreciate you more. <laughs> what? Hey, thanks for watching today's episode no, of Pro Church Daily. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, thank... <laughs> <laughs>